Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking, it's a bonus review, it's the Hi-Tech Multi-Charger X1 Touch. And this is a battery charger, of course. It's an intelligent computerized battery charger. It looks different, I mean, I've been using the AccuCell 6 and a number, number of other four button Chinese chargers for quite some time. They all work pretty damn well actually. Calibration's an issue with some of the cheaper ones. They don't always balance properly, but uh, for the money it's pretty hard to beat one of these cheap Chinese chargers. But what about this? This is a bit more upmarket. It's a bit more expensive and it's got a brand name that we recognize uh, from the hobby industry for many, many years. So what do you get for the extra money and you know i mean it's got no buttons how does it work without any buttons and so what are the pros cons minuses and just how does this thing stack up let's take a look at the high-tech multi-charger x1 touch right first of all let's just take a quick look at the whole thing it's a nice plastic container it's red so it doesn't show the blood that's always a bonus um, there's an ac input it'll run on one 100 through 240 volts so it's good for your american standard or your european Japanese, New Zealand, Australian, whatever, and I suspect they just give you a different power cord depending on the country they're sending it to. It has a grill here because it has a fan, and the fan is quite good. It's a thermostatically controlled one, so it only goes when it's necessary. Um, it has all the necessary uh, bits and pieces here, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I didn't even notice this before. It's got a little pop-out feet. How about that? So when you have it sitting there, it will be angled up at the right angle. Lovely. I didn't even know that till I started this review, and I've been using this. Uh, charger for a couple of months now and it's I like reviewing products I've been using for a while because quite often if you just grab it out of the box and stick it on the bench you miss some of the important features or you become unaware of some of the major drawbacks so I can give a pretty informed review on this one because I have been using it now it has unlike the four button chargers most of them has a separate balance board okay uh, I'm not that much of a fan of separate balance boards and these wires are really stiff they're plastic not silicon so it's it's you know it it, it won't stay where you put it but uh, that's probably minor that plugs into the side through a multi-way connector here and again I've found that with the really stiff wires eventually you get fractures near the base of the connector so again this is probably a negative this horrible lead and I'm just waiting for the day when I have to rewire it because the wires break with constant flexing. Never mind. Now it has DC input. So I showed you it has AC input, but it also has DC input. So you can use it as a field charger. In fact, it comes with a little lead you can plug in there. It's got crocodile clips on. You can throw it on your car battery if you're at the field or you know a battery you have set aside for charging purposes. Um, has PC link. Haven't used that. I guess that's useful for some people, but uh, life's too short to be connecting computers up to my charger. And it has a temper temperature probe. But again, I've never seen anyone use a temperature probe with any of these chargers because some of the Chinese four button chargers also offer that temperature probe connection. Then of course it's got the standard banana connectors output that goes off to your battery. It doesn't come with this. This is something I've added and I was a bit disappointed to find that it only comes with a Dean's connector because to be honest not a lot of people are using Dean's these days. Um, it's, it's fallen from grace. The XT60, I mean they use XT60 on the input but they provide a Dean's connector for your battery and I mean you've got JST, you've got XT60, XT90, there's a whole lot of different types of connectors which these multi-way connectors support so splash out another five bucks and buy one of these you'll be much happier with this or any charger if you do that so there we go now um, i'm going to plug it into the mains we'll have a look at at this touch screen and how it works and as i turn this on the rain is falling outside so please excuse me if the audio gets a bit uh, a bit noisy there we go high tech as if you had forgotten and there's the little LCD screen with all the various options. I'll try and get a good uh, a good shot of this. The lighting, of course, isn't that good here. Got a bit of reflection on that screen. I think that's, again, one of the problems with these touchscreen LCDs that I've always been a complainer about is that they, you know, they just don't perform well under high lighting conditions. And I've got good lights in the studio here, so we're getting quite a bit of reflection off the ambient light. So, yeah, sorry about that. In fact, I'll try and reorient the camera so there's less of that glare. Okay, I've had to kill some of my studio lights to make this work. But here we go. As you can see, this is the standard menu screen. We can select our battery types here, just like the four button chargers. We've got lead acid, lipo, lithium ion, and I think LIFE is in there as well. LIFE, and it just cycles around. NIMH, NICAD, lead acid. So yeah, we can just keep going around by pressing that button. No big deal there. All the stuff you'd normally expect from a four button charger. On this side, we've got some more menu options. Um, we've got the same thing. We've got, uh, what do we got here? Charge, obviously, discharge. We've got storage. We've got fast charge. We've got balance charge. And this is a new one, voltmeter. This enables us to use our charger as a voltmeter. Um, 
this, I mean, you can use a voltmeter as a voltmeter, but hey, it's a feature in there. Why not use it? Why not use it? Uh, we can set the number of cells with this menu here, and it's just step up and down. So you can go from two, six, now through to six. So yeah, it's fairly straightforward. I'll leave it on three and enter. Then we've got our capacity. We can set the battery capacity. And normally, when we set our capacity, you'll notice that the charge rate goes up to whatever 1C for that battery capacity is. So we've got 1,700 milliamps, 1.7 amps. Let's go to 2,200. 2.2 amps. Ah, that's fairly straightforward, automatic, so it makes life easy. And what else have we got here? We've got setting. This enables us to set a whole lot of other stuff, system settings and so forth. I'm not going to bore you with that, but you can change the colors and a few other bits and pieces. So yeah, you can play with that to your heart's delight if you buy one yourself. Then we've got presets. So you can set up various preset menu options here for commonly used batteries if you want to use those. So let's go back Oh, the noise is getting terrible with the rain. I'm sorry about that. I'll try and keep talking so it doesn't make too much noise in the background. And then, of course, we've got start. Now, I'm going to plug in a 2,000 milliampere hour battery here. It's one of Barry's, actually. 2,200 milliampere hour battery into the thing. And also, note this balance board here. Excuse the poor lighting now. This balance board, this supports all sorts of different battery balancing connectors, but honestly, really the only balancing connector that anyone uses these days are the ones that come on there, like the Turnergy and the other battery, so it's a bit of overkill. Definitely a bit of overkill. I'd rather have had that built into the charger itself. So I'm going to plug this in, and I'm going to go to, now first of all, check the voltage. Here we go, there's the voltage check, and it says we're at 3.91. So yeah, you can see each individual cell has a little bar here, so you can see if it's wildly out of balance. Then you get the voltage readings there, and you get a total voltage somewhere of 11.7 volts. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. So I'm going to start the charge. Here we go. No, sorry, I had the wrong thing. I've got to select here, balance charge. Here we go, and I'll start the charge. Makes a little beep, and the way it goes, it's charging. Now it's telling us stuff like the, uh, the capacity of the battery, um, or the number of milliamps it's put in, I think, capacity. So far it's zero. The current gradually ramps up down here. It doesn't just start off at full current, ramps up slowly, so it's going to go slowly up to 2.2 amps. It tells us the temperature of the charger itself. And why would we need to know that? I noticed the fan comes on at about, what is it, uh, I think 30 or 40 degrees? Anyway, so it's, it's, it, it comes off and on with a the thermostat. Um, and the total time of the charging that we've undertaken. Now, so far we've put in nine milliamps. So yeah, that's just gonna ramp up like it does on your four button charges. One thing you can do is you've got an LCD the screen here with graphics. So it enables you to graph the battery charge. To be honest, on a LiPo battery, it's not a lot of use because it's gonna be pretty much a straight, straight line until it levels off. You can't tell an awful lot from the charge graph. If you're doing nickel metal or some other or lead acid, you'd get more information, but on a LiPo, it doesn't really tell you very much. Sad about that, but never mind. Now, the other thing you can do on here is you can check the balance status, which is really just that voltage display, but it gives you one really other useful little piece of information, the battery resistance. This is a 56 milliohm battery. And that's one way of telling the C rating of a battery and whether the battery's aging, because if this number goes up, your battery's getting tired. So you really want to have the lowest possible number here for maximum performance. High C batteries should have a lower number, a lower internal resistance, and old or low C batteries will have a higher number. So it's a good way to check and see how your batteries are doing if you've got a, a reference, if you know what they were before. So there you go, that's you know pretty much it. There's not a lot else to see um, on this. You can uh, stop at any time. And if I go back into capacity now, I'll ramp up the charge rate because you can set the charge rate manually higher than the battery capacity. That's fine. So I'll do that and we'll go back to charge. Beep, beep, beep. And we'll see what happens. It should go right up to the three amps or so that I suggested. You can change this color scheme. If you don't like the khaki green and blue, you can change it. In fact, I think it was a different color scheme when I got it, but this one actually is the least offensive. So, yep, here we go, 1.2 amp. It is actually, I think, a six amp charger, uh, 60 watts as well maybe a bit more i'm not sure i'll put that in the description if you have a look in the description you'll see the specifications for this charger but there we go it does take a long time to ramp up i have to say let's see we're up to 2.6 2.91 here we go 2.8 yeah so it's up to th nearly three amps charging at nearly three amps that's fine i shall now stop it i shall go back to capacity but notice i've gone back to capacity and it's reset my charge current i didn't like that i've set the charge to current to three amps but then when I go back again, it's automatically set it back to 1C. That means for every battery I charge, I'm going to have to go through and reset this. 
Oh, it's a bit of a pain, so it's a bit of a negative, bit of a negative on this charger. You'll notice, if you could hear, over the rain and the go-karts outside, you'll notice this is completely silent at the moment. It won't make any noise until that temperature gets up to the level that triggers the little inbuilt fan, but no, there you go. I mean, it's a quick review. Um, I'll give you some final thoughts. Now, like most high-tech products, it comes with a really good manual. It's easy to use. They really do have a good grasp on creating a good user interface. The high-tech people, it shows on their high-tech Aurora transmitter. It shows on this little charger. It's simple to use. I don't think I've actually referred to the manual. I haven't needed to, but if you do need to refer to it, it's there and it's good. It's not just the sort of torn, tatty, half A4 sheet that sometimes comes with, or the no documentation at all that often comes with some of the four button chargers. So as I say, I've used this a lot. It has worked flawlessly. I love it at home because it's quiet. You don't get that raucous beep beep beep, beep to tell you your battery's charged if you're charging it of an evening and you've got uh, you know, the, the wife sleeping in the room next door. No problems, it's nice and quiet. And it just works as advertised. So there you go. Is it good value? I don't know. I don't know what it costs where you live in the world, but have a look. It is a definitely an alternative to the standard four button chargers. Having the mains bit of circuitry built in so you can just plug it in the wall, that's a big bonus you don't get on things like the AccuCell 6. And it can be used as a field charger again. So there you go. Quick look, mini review. Hope you liked it. If you've got questions, comments, put them on the bottom of this video. And I should mention, if I reach across my desk here, ooh, that. <clears throat> I first reviewed this for the Australian Airborne magazine, Australia's leading, maybe it's only, I don't know, but the leading model flying magazine in Australia. I write for this magazine, I write columns and I do reviews. So there you go, um, I will give them a plug. Give them a plug, eh? There you go, don't plug many things, but I'm plugging Airborne magazine. If you can get your hands on a subscription to this, then do it, because it's worth reading. One of the few magazines that I've seen these days that actually has kept up and has a lot of good stuff in it, especially the stuff I write. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for watching. Now I have to get back to the good old bench. See you soon.